Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about the benefits of zinc in your skincare products. But before we do that, give this video a thumbs up if you like hearing about skincare ingredients, skincare products from a board certified dermatologist. Make sure you are subscribed and you have your bell notification on. That way you know as soon as my videos go live. Zinc, it's anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant, meaning it helps our body ward off against environmental stressors that create too many free radicals that would otherwise damage proteins and lipids in our body. And zinc is essential for the function of a variety of enzymes throughout our body, including in our skin, things that help with repair and healing and recovery of our skin and repair of damaged collagen. You need zinc to do that. Recently, I did a video, not recently, it seems like it was recent, I'll link it down below, on the skin signs of zinc deficiency. Very eye-opening, when you become zinc deficient, how critical it is, not only for your skin, but for your total body health. So definitely check that video out if you missed it. But in this video, we're just gonna be diving into the benefits of putting zinc on our skin and skincare products. If you are watching me for the very first time, sunscreen is important, arguably the most important aspect of your skincare routine. Maybe you have come to realize this if you're new to skincare, but zinc is an active ingredient in mineral sunscreens. Uh, this is an ingredient that actually can protect the skin against uh, the rays from the sun that burn our skin, those are known as UVB rays, as well as the rays that penetrate really deeply and damage our collagen, those are known as UVA rays. However, the devil is definitely in the details when it comes to zinc oxide and sun protection. You can't just walk into the drugstore and pick up a zinc oxide diaper rash cream and expect it to protect your skin from those UV rays. It is a very detailed thing to formulate a sunscreen. And when it comes to zinc oxide, the zinc oxide formulation has to be just right in order for it to protect you from a burn and from sun damage and from those UV rays. So while it protects against those rays, it's gotta be formulated correctly. Zinc oxide can clump together and not lay down properly on the skin to offer that protection. And it can create these little clumps that you won't see with your naked eye um, just by applying like a diaper rash cream, but it's basically holes where you're not getting any UV protection. So I've seen, you know, videos online from various and sundry uh, influencer types suggesting zinc oxide diaper rash creams as an alternative sunscreen, no. So let's make that crystal clear from the get-go of this video. You can't just get a cream or a lotion with zinc oxide in it and think that it's going to be protecting you from the sun. That is not the case. When it comes to sunscreen and sun protection, if you're choosing a sunscreen, always make sure that it is labeled as a sunscreen and that it says it is broad spectrum, implying that it protects you against both UVB rays and UVA rays. But zinc oxide, as well as other types of zinc in skincare products, have other benefits to the skin. Zinc is anti-inflammatory and it is soothing. Those are kind of vague terms, but anti-inflammatory, meaning it helps calm down excessive amounts of inflammation that would slow down healing and aggravate skin conditions, many of which we're gonna to touch on in this video. Zinc is also soothing, possibly because it may help in improving um, epidermal repair and skin barrier recovery. Because again, it's an important element of the enzyme function of a variety of enzymes in the skin. So it is known to support skin barrier recovery and topical products, and it is a skin protectant. So when you have raw inflamed open skin, zinc, it is protective and it is healing and it allows for repair. And those two things together also help it to be soothing. A classic example of a zinc preparation is going to be calamine lotion. Calamine lotion is very soothing, for weepy, oozy rashes, typical of poison ivy, for example, are certain really weepy, oozy types of eczema, or even a foot fungus, calamine lotion, because it can be soothing, is beneficial for those. However, calamine lotion can be pretty drying if you've ever used it. I mean, that's kind of one of its benefits is that it dries up that inflammatory, oozy stuff, and it's soothing and calming. Zinc oxide also has antimicrobial properties, making it beneficial for tackling a variety of skin conditions related to friends and foes that appear on our skin. And by friends, I mean, 
there are bacteria and yeast and all sorts of things that naturally live on our skin, beneficial, but they can get a little bit too comfortable. Here's something I bet you didn't know zinc can be beneficial for, and that is warts. I have a recent video, by the way, on how to tackle and treat and prevent warts. So check that out if you're dealing with warts like on the bottoms of your feet or your hands, Warts can really take a while to go away. And did you know that zinc oxide preparations applied to the skin, whether it be a cream or a solution, actually have been shown to hasten the resolution of warts. If you'll recall from that video, in otherwise healthy people who have a uh, you know, healthy immune system, most warts will go away by themselves with no treatment at at least a year, if not sooner. But you can get more warts in the neighboring area. I mean, they can really be a pain. And when it comes to warts on the palms and soles, a lot of treatments can be pretty painful, especially in young children. Anywhere from five to 10% zinc sulfate solution applied three times a day to the warts actually has been shown to help in the clearance of warts better than just plain placebo, making them go away faster. Maybe it has something to do with the healing properties of zinc and a 20% zinc oxide ointment applied to warts likewise has been shown to help them go away faster. This is not a standard of care treatment. You're not gonna go to a dermatologist to have your warts treated and then tell you to use zinc oxide cream first line. They're gonna try other more effective evidence-based treatments for sure. But zinc oxide cream, like a diaper rash cream applied to a ward, it's not harmful. It can help protect the skin and the neighboring skin, which if you recall from my wart video, one of the reasons why warts spread is they get into little, the virus gets in little cracks in the neighboring skin. So at the very least, it helps protect the surrounding skin from that wart virus spreading around. It's not painful, it's inexpensive. Definitely worth trying if you have tried everything else out there for warts. Here's another thing that zinc has been shown to surprisingly be beneficial for, and that is decreasing the number of recurrences of herpes outbreaks. I have a video as a side note. I know I'm always plugging my videos, but I wanna point them out because if you deal with these conditions and maybe you want some more information, but I do have a video on herpes cold sores, herpes viruses, they're really, really common. And you can have cold sores or you can have uh, sores in the genital area related to certain types of herpes. And herpes is forever. Like that old slogan used to say that you would see on advertisements, herpes is forever. There is no cure, the virus lives in your body and it wakes up from time to time. That's why you get these little sores. And it can wake up when you get run down, stressed out. It can wake up on the face, for example, with a cold sore if you go out in the sun because the sun suppresses the immune system. And when you're having an outbreak, that skin lesion, you're shedding those virus particles, those herpes virus particles, and it is contagious. So you can spread that virus to someone else. Zinc acetate gel applied to a genital herpes has actually been shown to decrease transmission. Again, I mean, it's not the type of thing that you can rely on to prevent you from spreading it. I would still recommend being very careful to not come in close contact with somebody when you have an active outbreak, but it has actually been shown to reduce transmission. And in another study, individuals applied either one, two, or 4% zinc sulfate. They applied it for three months, and these preparations of zinc reduced the number of recurrences. And the reduction, was much greater with the higher percentage. This was in comparison to placebo. So to be clear, I'm not suggesting that anybody go out and use diaper rash cream to prevent transmission of herpes virus, but it does kind of speak to the properties of zinc as a skin protectant and perhaps for healing in that not only did it help in reducing the number of outbreaks, but it also helped in reducing transmission. Here's another little thing that you probably didn't realize body odor. A medical term for that is bromhidrosis. Now I've got a video, again, here I go, plugging my videos. I've got a video on the best drugstore products for body odor. Most of body odor is gonna be related to the breakdown of sweat by the bacteria that naturally live on our skin. The treatment for body odor is gonna be an antiperspirant to reduce sweat and or some type of topical antimicrobial to reduce the burden of bacteria that break down that sweat and lead to body odor. 
Interestingly, zinc oxide has been shown to help cut, uh, cut down on bromhidrosis of the feet. So if you have really sweaty, smelly feet, you might consider using a diaper rash cream there. The studies looking at zinc for bromhidrosis of the feet, they specifically used a zinc sulfate solution. In these studies, they had the patients apply the zinc sulfate solution to the uh, soles of the feet as well as between the toes every day for two weeks. And then they had them apply it three times a week for two weeks. And then after that, they applied it one time a week uh, as maintenance. These folks had actually pretty good results in terms of reduction in foot odor and it was sustained outwards of two months after the initial round of more frequent treatment. Then there was another study looking at 58 patients who applied zinc sulfate to the feet and between the toes versus 50 patients using a placebo solution with no zinc sulfate in it. 70% uh, of those using the zinc sulfate solution had complete co clearance of their foot odor versus only 2% of those using the placebo uh, control. So suggest again that zinc sulfate at least may be helpful for really smelly feet. This might be related to perhaps reducing the burden of bacteria on the feet in this case, or even under the arms, you can imagine it might be beneficial that break down sweat and lead to strong odors. Here's another skin condition that can benefit from a little topical zinc, and that is tinea versicolor. I have a video on this too. This is a fungal infection that's really common actually in tropical environments. It's worsened by sweat left on the skin. It's basically due to an inflammatory response to kind of overgrowth of a little yeast that naturally lives on everyone's skin called malassezia. And if you've watched my video on tinea versicolor, you'll recall, and I point this out frequently, that the anti-dandruff shampoo, Head and Shoulders, the active ingredient in that is something called zinc pyrithia a well-established treatment for tinea versicolor. Uh, you just lather that shampoo to the rash and let it sit on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. This ingredient, the zinc pyrithione, it's anti-inflammatory and it's cytotoxic, meaning deadly, to that little yeast. That's zinc pyrithione, but 15% zinc sulfate solution applied for three weeks actually resulted in complete clearance of the tinea versicolor. This was after three weeks of daily application. What about acne? Is zinc the secret to acne? There's always been some interest in zinc supplementation for acne. I've got a video talking all about this, like is it really a good idea to supplement with zinc if you have acne? And the origins of this come from the fact that a study was done in which acne patients, it was discovered, tend to have lower serum zinc levels. So there's been some interest in zinc supplements for acne with mixed results. Some showing benefit, others not so much. And supplementing with zinc can have side effects, gastrointestinal upset, it can affect your copper levels, which is not a great thing. All that to say, what about putting zinc on the skin for acne? Is that a good idea? Similar to supplementing with oral zinc for acne, the research on topical zinc for acne is likewise kind of underwhelming. One study showed no benefit with using topical zinc for acne versus just plain placebo. Topical zinc, while it may be beneficial, for acne, given its anti-inflammatory properties, it's not a go-to treatment and the results are not predictable. Then you have psoriasis. As a side note, it's Psoriasis Awareness Month. Check out my recent video, again, here I go plugging my videos, on uh, psoriasis tips for clearing it up. Uh, but one thing that actually can benefit uh, plaque psoriasis is a topical zinc pyrithione cream, likely because zinc pyrithione is anti-inflammatory and it's anti-proliferative. Psoriasis is a disease where the epidermis is hyper-proliferative. That's why you get those thickened plaques. Topical zinc pyrithione has been shown to actually help improve that. A 0.25% zinc pyrithione cream applied twice daily specifically. Then you have eczema, a chronic inflammatory skin condition where you have impairment of the skin barrier. Here, zinc makes a lot of sense. It supports epidermal barrier recovery, which is really a problem for people who have eczema that ultimately is going to reduce oxidative stress in the skin, and it's also anti-inflammatory, 
and maybe help in preventing colonization by bacteria, which frequently happens in eczema. And we know that zinc oxide paste is a great treatment for diaper dermatitis, which is an eczematous type of skin reaction due to trapping of moisture, rubbing and friction of the skin, breakdown of the skin, and then colonization with, in the case of diaper dermatitis, yeast. So a zinc oxide uh, cream is very beneficial. Zinc oxide paste is very beneficial there. And likewise has similar beneficial effects to the skin lesions of eczema. Now it's not a go-to standard of care treatment for eczema. There are much more evidence-based treatments for eczema beyond zinc uh, as a cream or lotion. However, it may help in reducing the itch, which can be a very significant cause of impaired quality of life in people with eczema is that chronic itch that constitutes the nature of the skin disease, keeps people up at night, can impact your mental health as a result. I mean, for sure. So topical zinc may actually be beneficial in reducing the itch related to eczema. While zinc can be drying, unlike uh, medications, there really aren't any side effects that you have to worry about with it which is another reason, and unlike many medications, it's pretty inexpensive. Don't sleep on diaper rash cream though if you are somebody who deals with rashes in the skin folds because it's a similar mechanism going on. Moisture, trapping, plus sweat, plus skin on skin contact and friction, breaks down the skin barrier, leads to irritation, sores, and is a hospitable environment then for colonization with like candida yeast in the case of intertrigo, which can happen between the thighs and the groin area or under the breast, under the arms. So don't sleep on a diaper rash cream in these areas if this is a type of thing that you deal with a lot. Anti-inflammatory and may help facilitate barrier repair in these areas and basically just act as a skin protectant, reducing those frictional forces on the skin. All right, y'all, so those are some benefits of zinc oxide for the skin in some certain situations where you may elect to try out, say, a diaper rash cream or a zinc pyrithione cream in the case of tinea versicolor. Check out some of my other videos as they relate to these topics, but I hope this was beneficial and you guys enjoyed it. Now on the end slate, I'm going to post my video all about uh, oral zinc, so check that one out if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.